Our next question will be, how does religion form culture? And this question already takes for granted that religion forms culture. But I think uh, it's easily observable that religion, in fact, does so. Uh, arguably, there never has been any society in the history of mankind that has not been formed by religion in some way or another. And uh, in, even in very fundamental ways. And uh, arguably this holds even for our modern Western secularized societies. So many sociologists even argue that the age of secularism is over now and that we are approaching a post-secular age or have already gone into it. So let's think a minute about secularism first. Secularism is usually understood as a, an all-pervasive attitude uh, towards the world and to one's own life, according to which there is nothing that transcends the limits of the world as we know it. So, one, if religion is such a pervasive phenomenon, it's a, a remarkable question uh, how secularism is possible. And there are different answers to this. So one radical answer goes back at least to Nietzsche and says that secularism is a result of Christianity. So uh, according to this view, Christian faith is critical and destructive towards polytheism, paganism, towards Jewish religion, but ultimately is self-destructive. So according to this view, Christian faith amounts to uh, the proposition that God is dead. And uh, that rather paradoxical view is uh, held by many post-structuralist philosophers. Others less radical scholars, for example, Canadian philosopher Charles Taylor, thinks uh, that there are at least some roots of secularism in late medieval philosophy in uh, 13th century nominalism. So be that as it may, uh, secularism is and remains to be an important topic for philosophy of religion that starts as a philosophy of culture. But there are other topics that are of a challenge for a philosophy of religion and culture, and I just name two of them. One is art and the other is politics. So uh, one rather obvious example, it seems, how religion forms, art, forms culture is art. So in most traditional societies, artistic practice is simply a part of religious practice. And uh, its topics are religious, uh, its practices are part of religious cult, and they are deeply embedded into religious culture and practice. But arguably uh, that is not only the case for traditional art, but it still holds for modern autonomous art, at least in some way, even though uh, art has emancipated itself from religious practice, still its content and its topics are informed by a religion. And uh, at least that is a view that is held by Hegel and the Hegelians, uh, for example, uh, people uh, like Benjamin uh, and Adorno and Bloch, uh, but also by Schelling and the Schellingians, for example, um, Kassira uh, and other philosophers of culture, uh, and also by Blumenberg. So uh, this is, seems to be a very fruitful and powerful approach to art. Just to name one example, 
uh, if you take uh, the one form of avant-garde art, abstract painting, abstract expressionism and the followers, uh, many scholars have convincingly argued that this kind of art, think for example of paintings by Mark Rothko or Barnett Newman, would simply be impossible without their, the background that the painters have in negative theology. So negative theology is a kind of theology that conceives of God in negative or even paradoxical terms and contemplates uh, the hiddenness and absence and negativity of God uh, in the absence of God in our experience and mourns it, contemplates it, uh, feels bad about it. And uh, that is, seems to be a deep formative influence on many varieties of contemporary art. So apparently religion uh, seems to be uh, a powerful inspiration for modern art, even in a secular age. But let's turn to another and perhaps more controversial field, uh, and that is politics. So we as philosophers of religion should not be surprised that there is a connection between religion and politics. So remember our initial definition of religion, which says uh, that religion has to do uh, with a relation to some transcendent entity uh, on which uh, we depend or assume that we depend. Uh, then this informs our lives as a whole and from this it immediately follows that it will inform our politics. So, and that uh, as such doesn't seem to be a problem, but we have a problem if we have conflicting religious demands. So demands that come stem from different religions or different confessions. We know this very well from the history of, of modern Europe, uh, that this can be a, a very powerful motivation for conflict and violence. And why is that so? Well, uh, the reason is quite obvious. Religious demands seem to be absolute demands. They allow for no exception, no moderation. So if there, is, there are conflicting religious demands, uh, we have an absolute clash of them, apparently. And so it seems that violence is unavoidable. For us as philosophers, that would be bad news. And I think this is the point where philosophy of religion must become critical about religion. And again, there are basically two options to be critical about religion. So one would be the secular approach, which says, well, let's bracket religion, uh, evacuate it, do away with it. Uh, but given the world we inhabit, that doesn't seem to be a realistic approach. So uh, it seems more promising to uh, investigate different religious traditions from within and search for their inner potentials for conflict solution, conflict moderation, uh, for pieces of practical and theological wisdom uh, that is inherent in religion, the different religious traditions and allows them to look for cooperation rather than conflict and for ways to resolve uh, their conflicts on religious terms. And doing that can be called, uh, and rightly so, I think, political theology. And political theology in that respect would be a piece of natural theology. So we are back again in the field of natural theology as a field of philosophy.
Schleiermacher famously claimed that religion is the feeling of absolute dependence. And, uh, you know, Hegel had a, a remark on that. Hegel said that if that were true, then a dog would be the most religious animal. Well, if you look at it, they might say it's not entirely fair to, to say so because on two points, because uh, on the one hand, the feeling has a different meaning for Schleiermacher than it has for Hegel, because feeling is something existential that requires you as a whole person. And uh, on, the one hand, on the other hand, the problem that Hegel has, he thinks that religion is more about freedom, not about dependence. Uh, in Schleiermacher, it's somehow a mixed thing. Uh, it's both dependence, but also freedom. But ultimately, you might say Hegel has a point here, uh, because uh, the point is that uh, religion is a matter of thinking as it is a matter of feeling. So uh, it requires you as an intellectual responsible person as well and not just as a feeling creature.